coming. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to our latest Silver Sirens Masterclass, Decluttering Your Relationships from Emotional Drama with our fabulous facilitator, Susie Pettit. For those of you who have not met Susie before, she's been helping women live the lives they love for over 20 years. She's the founder of the Love Your Life School and the host of the Love Your Life podcast. Susie is a certified parent, life and relationship coach and a mum of five sons aged 20, 18 to 26. Welcome, Susie. Thank you. <laughs> this is lovely. All right. I can dive right in. I am so glad I'm going to pin myself so because then I think when I... Um share the screen. It'll be great. So hello. I'm so glad you all are here today. Um, as Jody told you, you know, a little bit about my background. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I am a certified life relationship and parent coach. I think the relationship and the parenting certifications are going to be super helpful today. Um, and I've also been in it. I live it. I have been through, you know, I have parents as we all do if we're here. Um, <laughs> and I have three biological sons and I went through a divorce. So I have all of that background too that you learn from these life experiences. And then now I am married again and have two more, I call them bonus sons. So I have a combination of five. So I have lots of practice with this relationship stuff. So I'm thrilled to be here because I have in the past been in a lot of clutter in my relationships and I am no longer and it feels so good. So I love teaching on this and teaching on just the freedom that comes when we learn how to declutter our relationships. Like we all know, I loved it when Faith brought this topic to me because we know how good it feels to clear out a messy drawer or like to declutter a spot in our house. And the same is possible when we declutter some aspect of our relationship. Like when we clear these things that I'm going to talk about today from our relationship, it can feel so good. The difference is we often don't know that the clutter is in our relationships. Like in our house, you know, you can look around and you can see the extra stack of paper or the pile of books that's in your way from like eating dinner or on your table and, you know, the extra kitchen spoons that are overflowing in the drawer or whatever. But in our relationship, we can't see the clutter. We can't see the boundary that needs to be set or the emotional dependency that we have in there that's cluttering up our, our mind space. It's not as obvious as that pile of books that is making it so we can't sit at our table, okay? This was certainly my experience. Like, I didn't know I had clutter in my relationships. I knew I felt discomfort in my relationships. Like, I would, I would feel um, resentful, frustrated, irritated, um, annoyed. I mean, all, of, all, all the fun ones. <laughs> but I just thought... Like either I was doing something wrong or, you know, I just, I just thought this is what it's like to be in a relationship with, you know, your parents or a husband or a kid. And when I started working with a coach and learning some of the things I'm going to teach you today, I started to see how I was adding clutter to these relationships. And when I stopped doing that, when I decluttered, I felt so much better. So does that sound good to you? <laughs> like anyone want to feel better and a little more ease in their relationship <laughs> I hope so because that's why I'm here today so today I want you to come away from this I want to teach a bit about the biggest way that I see us adding clutter into our relationships an easy thing we can do to start to declutter and then leave time at the end if you have questions or you want to get coached on a specific area in your relationship that you see yourself doing this clutter. Um, I also, everyone remind me, I just before this, I got all inspired and made a worksheet, like a thing that you can, that I'll send to whoever wants it, um, that is sort of fun to carry, like to carry on and do um, as you're working. Okay, so let's get started. Let's see if Susie can share her screen in the way that she wants to and dive in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So first things first, um, well, here's the declutter your relationship. The pretty one. Can everyone see that? The blue thumbs up? Yeah. Okay. So first things first is to learn about something called emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is not something any of us in the Silver Sirens were taught in school. And I know this because they didn't discover it until 
the 80s, and then they didn't start teaching on it until the late 90s or the early 2000s. So first of all, like it's really important when we're learning things like this to not get into a place where we're beating ourselves up like I should have known this or because we didn't like you literally couldn't have they didn't know that the brain worked in this way until we were you know past our school age um and so for that first of all we don't want clutter but also um we have a lot of clutter in our relationships because we don't understand where emotions and feelings are coming from okay not only don't we clearly understand this our parents didn't either. So how could our parents teach us? Okay, what ended up happening and what ends up happening is a lot of people think like we don't have the emotional intelligence. So we think that our feelings come from the things happening in our lives. Okay, I have done other talks in Silver Sirens where I like really dive into emotional intelligence and talk about and I think they're all in the recording area of um, maybe Faith can give links and all that. But one thing we... Um, and so we can watch those other videos, but for today's sake, I want to keep it super simple. Let's say clutter free. <laughs> and the main takeaway we want about emotional intelligence is this one, that our emotions come from our thoughts. If there is one thing you can remember from this presentation, it is this: our emotions, which we can use synonymous with the word feelings. So our emotions or our feelings come from our thoughts. So the other way, our thoughts create our emotions, okay? Another way of saying that, because since we weren't taught this, it's nice, like sometimes we need a little hammer into our midlife brains to be like, <laughs> our thoughts cause our feelings. You can take a screenshot of this one. We feel what we feel because of how we're thinking. Our brain likes to think we feel how our, we feel because our husband is leaving the socks on the floor. And of course, everyone's going to be irritated or we feel how we feel because our daughter should have taken the advice that we gave her two weeks ago. And why is she still coming to us? But we don't. <laughs> we feel how we feel because of our thinking. Okay. And this is actually, whoops, sorry. I don't know what is happening with my, there we go. Um, this is actually great news because this is where our relationship decluttering comes in. Somehow it's not letting me move my, oh, there we go. Um, so it's great news that our thinking causes our feelings because it gives us control. When we're thinking other people control our feelings, we're giving them the control. We're letting, like, if, if it's what they do that makes us feel a certain way, well, then we're totally disempowered. Talk about clutter. But if they can do whatever the heck they want to do, and it's just how we think about it that make us feel a certain way, that feels a whole lot better. So today we're gonna to focus in on how we add way too much clutter to our relationships by thinking that we're responsible for other people's feelings and experiences, okay? An example of this that happens, you know, let's just say your daughter comes over, if you have a daughter, if you don't have a daughter, um, insert, you know, son or friend or sister or whoever, sometimes you feel stressed or <laughs> frustrated with, okay? So say that person comes over for a visit and shares that she's super stressed. All right, she has a lot going on. Maybe one of her kids needs new shoes and she doesn't have time until the weekend to get it. And she's just talking. She's like, and then one of her friends was supposed to return a book that she needs for her upcoming book club. And how is she ever supposed to read it? And, and then she's like, and me and my partner never have a date night. And I just feel like so disconnected and he's complaining about it, blah, 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 blah. Okay, many of us in this situation would feel responsible for our daughter's feelings and circumstances. This is relationship clutter, okay? The fancy word for this is codependency, all right? Codependency, like we're codependent, we're like dependent on each other, is that when we feel overly responsible for someone else's feelings or experience, okay? And this is where we can't see the clutter in our relationship. Our daughter is telling us her experience and relationship clutter looks like us thinking we need to do something with that like our daughter is almost like handing us something and we're like okay now we need to do something with that like that's our job okay sort of like the equivalent and I love that we're working on clutter this month sort of like the equivalent of your daughter coming over with like 14 things that she bought from like Kmart or something 
And she's just like, I don't want these, but I don't have the time to return them. So I'm just going to leave them here in your front room. Okay. <laughs> and you're like, what? Like, but that's an actual thing. She's doing the same thing with like her. She's like, I'm stressed about the shoes. I'm stressed about the book. And I'm, and I'm just going to like land that on you. Okay. But we don't see it. So we take it on and we're like, oh, my poor. But like, if she was literally like bringing over, like, let's say she brought over, like she bought like 14 dying house plants at like Woolies or something. And she's like, you know, these, like, I just don't want to return them. And like, I mean, we pretty much like, like, I hope most of us would be like, this is so cool. <laughs> like, why are you leaving, like you, why are you leaving your plants here? This is yours as well. But with relationship drama, we find ourselves maybe saying something like, oh, okay, hold on, wait, let me think. I can buy the grandkids the shoes today if you tell me their size. And you know what? Why don't I watch them this weekend so you can get out with your partner um, for a date and wait, which book? Because I might be able to check my library to see if you have it. Okay, do you see how we did that? We sort of take her experience and then we're like, we take it on as if it's like our life and our thing to solve. Okay, that is codependency, thinking that her feelings or her experiences are us to solve. And that is a lot of clutter. Okay, so let's look at one of the clutter defining to the, or the clutter removing tools called empathy instead of the clutter building tool called codependency. Okay, empathy is a fine place to be in a relationship with people that we care about. It is caring about how someone feels. Okay, codependency is when we take responsibility for how that person feels. So using that example of the stressed daughter, what this looks like in a decluttered relationship, using empathy is instead of us feeling this like heaviness of responsibility that we need to fix our daughter's problem, we say something to her like, wow, that sounds tough. I'm sorry. It sounds like you have a lot going on. And then we close our freaking mouth. <laughs> feels uncomfortable. <laughs> we offer love and support, not solutions. Okay. Support, not solutions. We're not solving it for her. It codependency is it's our, our job to figure out how to fix this. Okay. With some personalities, like depending on the daughter we have or the friend or whoever we're talking about, with some personalities, when we offer advice or when we try to fix their problems, they end up feeling annoyed and maybe might get argumentative. Like if we said that to our daughter and we're like, I can look at the library for the book. And I like, you know, she, she might say like, I don't need you to get the book, mom. I'm just telling you that I'm like annoyed about it. Or like, I don't need you to like, you know, tell me like watch the kids this weekend with my partner. I don't even want to go out with him. I'm so annoyed with him. Like, gosh, what do you think I am? A 12 year old. So like some people will feel the people in our lives are going to feel like they're like, I didn't need you to fix like what do you they didn't need us to fix it they get annoyed and or argumentative they push back against the advice that we're giving them advice they didn't ask for <laughs> but they push back okay so it's just important for us to know that sometimes when we offer help it can serve to be unhelpful it like disconnects us like we think we're connecting but we're disconnected with other personalities and i see this a lot also is that when we offer the help, they're all too happy for us. <laughs> they're all too happy for us to solve their life. They're all too happy for us to accept it. They're like, okay, great. Here's her shoe size. It's almost like she has it all written up. Here's the shoe size. This is the store you should go to. And yeah, here's the title of the book. Okay. And while in that moment, we might feel a sense of like, ah, oh, I helped her like with this. It does the opposite long-term because we're functioning in their lives in a way they should be functioning in their lives, right? This is called over-functioning. And this is something, the last talk I gave in the Silver Sirens, a lot of you wanted to hear more of. So I just want, this is like a great thing to think about, like where are we over-functioning in people's lives, doing things for others that they can do for themselves. Because what happens in this over-functioning dynamic is called something called learned helplessness. Okay, so we set up this dynamic with the, uh, where the other person is looking for us to take care of things that are not ours to take care of, okay? And then they sort of like, it, it, they, they often have lower confidence and can feel more anxious 
just in sort of spin in this like, oh my God, what do I do? I need the book and I don't have my kids shoes and my partner wants to get together with me and mom, mom, what do I do? And then they're like, instead of using their brain and their amazing resource of their, in their head, they're like using our brain to function. Okay. It's, it is clutter in a relationship. It is like her coming into your house and leaving 12 dying house plants. Okay. And that is just unhelpful. So this over-functioning is one thing that I'm going to focus on today, because if we can look at where we're over-functioning in other people's lives, we are going to remove a lot of clutter from our relationships. All right, before I go further, <laughs> are there any questions about, I just landed a lot on you, emotional intelligence, um, that our thoughts come from our feelings, codependency, this over-responsibility for other people's feeling states, and that over functioning is doing things for others that they can do for themselves. Do, are there any questions? I don't know if I can see the chat box. Just maybe take yourself off mute if so. Otherwise, I'll just keep going. Okay. I think you can keep going, Susie. Okay. All right. So, cause that's a lot. And this is like programming that we've had for, for decades. So it's just, we wanna be kind to ourselves as we're looking looking at this. And at the same time, um, we want to be aware of how to stop these patterns because these patterns aren't, aren't helping any of us. They aren't helping us and they aren't helping the people in our lives. So um, this, like when we are over-functioning, as I show you on this slide, what happens to the person who's over-functioning, who's using like their brain to solve someone else's life's problems is we will end up feeling resentful, burnt out, uh, annoyed, frustrated. Hey, this can look like, you know, someone calling and like your friend is um, going through a struggle with her, her, I don't know, her husband. And, and she just like is always calling with the same, you know, like my husband is like, he's never home. I always want him around for the, for me. And like, I'm weird. He's always spends too much time at the pub or whatever. And you're giving like advice that she doesn't ask for You're over function. You're like, well, why don't you try this? Or why don't you try this? Or like, oh, you know, and we're just, we're like, we're over functioning in their lives. Then she calls back two days later with the same thing. You're going to feel resentful. You're like, why didn't you do what I told you to do? Why didn't you speak up? Did you ask him? you know, hey, can you come home for dinner tonight? Or hey, and she's like, no, I didn't. Okay, it can lead us to feeling resentful and burnt out. Okay, which makes sense. Cause it's like our brain, instead of our brain focusing on our life, our brain is focusing on someone else's life. That's freaking tiring. Like we have enough to deal with in our own life. Like that's a lot, okay? What happens on the other side for the person who we're un over functioning for is they get this sort of, like it, it, the the clinical term is called learned helplessness, but they they get this like feeling almost like victimy in their life, and this it it, it just feel, it's completely disempowered. It can feel very um like anxiety provoking, like oh my gosh, if I don't call Susie, well then how will I ever know what to do about that book? Or you know if we're talking about our children, this happens a lot that that they can feel like I can't solve this without mom. Okay, that's a lot of pressure for you that like you're responsible for solving things for your adult children. It's also very disempowering for them because they're like, what if I make the wrong decision? What if I do the wrong thing? What if I, and, you know, th that that's where that like lack of confidence, that anxiety, that overwhelm can come from. So we want to definitely be aware of that. All right. And then this slide, <laughs> bear with me, because <laughs> it looks a little complicated, but I'm going to talk through it because this is like, like, if, I feel like I could do a whole course, <laughs> like 15 classes just on this slide that I, I made this up for Silver Sirens. And I was like, wow. <laughs> but so at the top, we see, I guess I can't like point to it, but we see emotional intelligence and we have a plus sign and a minus sign. Okay. So the minus sign is when we're not recognize we're not in our emotional intelligent like intelligent best selves we are thinking that we are responsible for our daughter's feelings in this example or we're responsible for our friend's feelings so we're over here and then we're codependent okay and so what we do when we're codependent because we're feeling overly responsible for people and their feeling states 
We're going to overfunction. We're going to try to fix their life. We're going to try to, you know, tell them a different way to think about things or, or, or like we're just going in and we're using our brain to solve their life. And what ends up happening to us, this is the you over here, we feel resentment, we get burnt out, okay? we feel exhausted. What I see happening real time when I'm meeting with clients one-on-one -on -one is they, they just aren't living their life. Like they might be so exhausted when they're done, like holding all the emotions for their daughter or their friend that they, they're like, I can't even do that workout that I wanted to do. Or I, I don't even have the energy to make the dinner that's healthy for my body. Like they're just like, Ugh. you know, so friggin' exhausted. That's, I mean, I get it totally. It's very real. Okay. In relationally where we're adding the clutter is that we just get like, annoyed with them. We're like, why are they not doing it? Okay. Why are they not taking it? It's like, well, why are they not doing it? Because you are. So they don't need to. What a beautiful setup for them. <laughs> so this is where we sort of want to be aware of some of this. Okay. Look over here under over function and them. Okay. They're going to have this learned helplessness feeling. This, the, what that sort of means is they just are sort of like, they just have learned that they don't have the answers that they don't know what to do with those house plants. They're like, I don't have time. Mom will figure it out. You know, they don't know what to do about the partner complaining about, you know, not having a date night or whatever. They start to feel anxious. Like, ah, I don't know. This is so hard. What am I going to do? There's also a lot of inner talk and clutter in their brains about thinking they're going to make a wrong decision. That's what happens a lot is they're sort of looking outside of them to make the decision. So then they feel uncomfortable thinking like, how could I make the quote unquote right decision? Okay. And they have that low confidence. Like you might hear them be like, I don't know what to do. You know, like when we're just like, well, what are you going to do? That stinks. They're like, I don't know. <laughs> like, and then we have to be quiet because what they're looking is for you to tell them that's where they're feeling. So over here on the other side, the, the other side, like codependent is not helpful for anyone, for either setup, okay? Interdependent is what we're going for in our relationships. Um, I'm actually going to stop sharing this because sometimes what we do, I just want to draw a little sign on my um, dry erase board here. Like we think sometimes when we are being codependent, we... Like we go, like, so we have this codependent, I'm sure green is not a good color. For you. We have codependent where we're adding so much clutter to our relationship and we're basically like, feel like we're doing it all for everyone. Like, doesn't anyone understand like all the things I'm doing? Like, you know, blah, blah. So we're over here, totally exhausted, annoyed, irritated. Okay. Sometimes... We do this and then we swing all the way over here, which is like officially independent, but I call it like ice queen <laughs> or like, like, I mean, it's sort of like the B word. Like <laughs> we get a little like biatchi of, of, of just this, like, um, you know, our daughter asks us for this thing and we're just like, you just keep, you know, we just show up like, we swing all the way over here and we're like, forget it, forget you all. No one appreciates me. I'm done with you all. And, you know, and so then like we spend time over there and we like lock ourselves in a closet or we lock everyone out of the house or, you know, we're just like, screw you all. I'm done with you until sometimes we swing back here. And what I want you and what we're teaching here, and this is where the decluttering is, is interdependence where we like allow the other people in our lives to live their life. Like they make decisions, they're gonna have human, like they're having a life, so they're gonna have human emotions. Like they have kids, so they're gonna be stressed about when to buy the kids shoes, totally normal. We let them have those feelings. It's like we let them be them. So they're here, okay? And then we're here. And we just like take care of us. You know, sometimes maybe our daughter's like, oh my God, I, I need shoes by the weekend and it's just not working. And, and we're just like, I'm, and we offer empathy, our decluttering tool instead of codependency. 
We just say, I'm so sorry. That stinks. Like your life is really full. It sounds like it's really full right now. And she's just like, I know it's hard. It's so interesting. She's like, well, you know, and maybe she, she like thinks she's like, I'm just going to forget it. I, I actually don't need the shoes this weekend. I, like I was thinking it was so urgent, but actually I don't, they're fine. You know, or maybe she says something like, you know, like, I'm so um, stressed and I'm so like, I don't know what to do. She's like, but mom, maybe like, is it possible you could go to the stores on Thursday or Friday? Like, would you have, maybe she asks us instead of us rushing into fix, maybe she asks us in an interdependent relationship. That's fine. They can always ask. And then, so we don't add clutter. We check in with ourselves. We're like, let me see, do I have time or do I not? And for me, it's like, no, you know what? I don't. I'm so sorry. My week's pretty stacked too. Or I, no, I wasn't planning on going to the stores. I went, you know, saying no in this moment can feel very uncomfortable, which is why it's good to have a coach or have some sort of environment to, to just remind your nervous system that you're not doing something wrong. Like she can ask and then you check in with yourself. Okay. Or maybe you say yes. You're like, Actually, I can. But when you say yes in the interdependent model, you're saying it, your energy is so different. It's like coming from this place. It's like you, your higher, highest silver siren self. It's just, it's like, yeah, you know, that is how I'd like to show up for my daughter. I am good with that. That's not over-functioning. You're just like, yeah, it's pretty, you know what? I do have a free afternoon that afternoon. And I, I'm okay. If we do it from a place of like, of um the the codependent that's where we then feel resentful and then like nothing they say is enough of a thank you you know like like we jump in and we do something and 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 it, like that's when we feel we're just like no one appreciates everything i'm doing and no one and it's like right because you know you didn't really share with them and you jumped in to fix it fast so anyhow i'm gonna go back to the sharing it mode but i just um let me see my massive graphic here um <laughs> i i just like on here i just wanted to recognize that i only have two parts of that swinging like so we can be codependent or we can swing all the way over here to independent like that ice queen like i don't need anyone screw you all uh but what we want to do when we're in this plus sign of emotional intelligence realizing people are gonna have their own lives to live they have their experiences Part of the people we love having experiences is they're going to have uncomfortable human emotions. That's part of human life. Okay, we might want them not to, but us trying to protect them from that is it leads to the learned helplessness. Okay, that's not part of human life. And so interdependent, okay, I like the CCC, what I'm talking about here, when I say CCC is clear, concise communication. Okay, so when we're when we're interdependent, we can use CCC, clear, concise communication, where we can say, like, actually, daughter, I don't have time on Thursday to do whatever. Or actually, daughter, I do have time. You know what? I have like an open date Saturday. If you would like to have the kids stay here while you do a, you know, a date with your partner, that would work for me. Okay. But right underneath CCC, if you notice, it's honesty. That is very hard for many of us um, women of our age because we have all, unless some of you were raised somewhere magical, we have all <laughs> been raised in a patriarchal society where patriarchy teaches women that our job is to serve. Like it's not a man versus woman thing. It's like women are here to serve everyone. Like you better put your needs on the back shelf you are here to serve so so if anyone doesn't matter their gender has a problem well hop to it Susie q because <laughs> you're here to like putting your needs first no way okay you you know whatever you had planned for thursday put it on the back burner because your grandkids need shoes you know that is what we've been trained since very young age being the good girls being the people pleasers like we say yes, just because we're like, okay, go along, like be the good girl. I mean, we got all that programming. And yet, hey, one of the things that I'm constantly reminding people of is that people pleasing, first of all, doesn't work. <laughs> Second of all, is I like calling it people deceiving. 
you were lying to the person when you're like, you know, you're trying to say you're saying yes, because you're like, oh, this will make them happy. And they'll like, think that I'm this. Type. First of all, you're not showing your true self. Okay, you're not saying actually, I totally feel for you. And yet, like, I've already scheduled my whole week. And I have a lot on my path today. So it's like deceiving. Okay, It's also lying to the person. Okay, a better example for this that you might be able to say, see is like, say that friend, this this made up friend that I was talking about um, before, like say your friend calls and she's having all this relationship problem and um, she texts and she's like, hey, can you talk now? Okay. This is where it's like, take a breath and check in with herself, check in with yourself and interdependent. She can ask, like she can ask, you let her ask, can you talk right now? Then you check in with yourself. Can I talk right now? Like I'm in the middle of playing a card game with my husband. Can I talk right now? People deceiving looks like us saying, oh, okay, yes. That's part of that patriarchal model that you're here to serve people. Like it doesn't matter if you were playing a card game or maybe take the husband out of it because sometimes we can do it like, well, people please. And we're like, well, I have to do it for the husband. But say you're reading like your book that you wanted to read you, all day. You were like looking forward to this time to read a book. And you get a text from this friend who's in need and she's like, can you talk? Okay, pausing, taking a breath and being like, do I want to talk? Okay, honesty and really emotional adulthood here is saying like, hey, Susie, I love you. And yet, like I have been looking forward to all day reading this book. If this isn't an emergency, could we take a rain check till tomorrow? Okay, that is like, such a calm, mature level of relationships where the clutter is gone. It's just like, I totally love you. I know you're going through a hard time. And yet, like this, this is like, I'd really love to do this. Okay. Read my book, stare at a wall. Doesn't matter. Like whatever you want to do for yourself. They have a need, but remember with codependency, it's not your job to meet their need. They have a need. You have a need. Both your needs are valuable. We talk ourselves out of our needs and end up in relationship clutter. Instead, it's like treating our needs as equal and interdependent is going to give us a lot of ease there. Because the alternative is our friend sends us this text, can you talk? Okay, we say yes, even though we need no. So we're lying. That's not honest. Okay, we're like, okay, she wants it. So will people please her? We're people deceiving. She says yes. I mean, we say yes. We talk to her. We spend our, you know, 20, 60, however much long talking to our friend. It's the same freaking thing. She's going on and, you know, what, like we're feeling empathetic, but we're in this place where we're like our bottom line, we know that we didn't want to be doing this. So we're not going into it with this clean energy. And so then we're in there and we're just, then we hang up the phone. How do we feel? <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> right. We're right back to this resentment, burnout, and exhaustion. Right. Versus over here in the interdependent side, the CCC, clear, concise communication. And then that's that's the part where we're like, I love you. And I like I, I really want to be reading my book right now. Is this, you know, an emergency or could we take a rain check for tomorrow? That's honesty. That's also a boundary. Like you speaking up for yourself. How do you feel? Look at this jumping person. They're so excited. They feel connected. Like say your friend is like, yeah, I totally get it. This is just more of that BS with my husband. I'm good. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You know, okay. You feel connected. There's trust in the relationship and it feels freeing. Like, oh my God, it is safe to speak up for myself. This is a safe relationship. How does your friend feel? Confident also. She's like, oh, I can trust Susie. Like she's telling me the truth. They build resilience. They're like, oh, I don't always need to rely on her when I'm having a struggle with my husband. And what also happens in this place is pride because they figure it out. Say it is your daughter. And your daughter's like, oh my God, I'm so stressed and this is so awful. And like, I have, you know, all these things going on. And you offer her empathy, the decluttering tool. You're just like, oh, that sounds hard. That's really tough. You know, being a mom is hard, whatever. Okay. And then she just feels her. She feels connected with you. And then what does she do? She hangs up the phone and she's like, you know what? I think I don't really need to buy the shoes. I'm going to contact my library, see if they have the book and I'll, 
text partner and be like, hey, you want to do like, we could go to the park and grab a cup on the way. And that's about as good as we're getting for a date this time. How does she feel? Proud. She isn't in that place where she's like, well, mom solved my life. Okay, she feels proud. Another thing I just want to bring up here that I think people can relate to, like take that, this imaginary scenario that I came up with, okay? take that daughter who's asking this stuff and say you do give advice and you're like, you're like, okay, I'll watch the kids. How about you and husband or you and partner go out to this cafe and, and watch a movie on Saturday and, and say your daughter's like, okay, sounds good. The other problem with this is, say she goes out to that cafe, say they get a bad meal. Okay, and she goes to the movie and she doesn't like it. Who does she blame? Herself? No. It's She's like mom. I mean, it's like she's such in that emotionally child mode. Well, if you hadn't told me to go to that cafe, like if I was going to make a decision, I would have gone here. It's like totally disempowering for her too. Versus say she's like, you know, mom, she's like, okay, I'm going to do this, this date night and I'm going to try to figure, and we'll go to this cafe and she goes and it's a cruddy meal and like, you know, she's just like, right. Like she has no one to blame. And she's going to learn that maybe she blames herself or maybe it's the funniest thing ever with her and her partner. They're like, can you believe that we went to that place? Like all they had was, you know, a, a pack of bread from Woolies. That's what they thought our meal was good. Like, isn't that so fun? They, you know, but they aren't blaming you. That's just another way that we separate from our relationships that is unhelpful. Okay. So I'm going to pause again because I know we looked at ending at 1150, but I just, I really, um, well, let me share this just, oh, how do I do this again? Sharing screen. The, the main takeaway that I want people to have from today as I go back over the slides is that our feet, like our feelings, I guess it's going to be the codependency one. Our feelings are our responsibility. Other people's feelings are their responsibility. We are going to get into emotional relationship clutter when we are thinking it is our job to fix someone else's emotions. That's the over-functioning. This over-functioning is where we are going to have the, the challenge, the clutter in our relationship. And that's why if I can pull this one up, um, when I, I made this fun worksheet for us called Decluttering My Relationships, because look at that person jumping for joy up there. So I have this worksheet and if you want it, I'll, I'll put my email there so you can email, I can just email it directly to you. I can also share it with Jody so she can do whatever she wants with it. But the idea is on the, on the left-hand side, name slash relationship, like you put the person's name in there. Like if it's me, I'm going to put Tyler and then slash son, like he's one of my sons. And then three to four words to describe how I feel after spending time with them. Okay, maybe I think of a specific time recently where I spend time with it. Like, how am I feeling? Am I feeling light? Am I feeling excited? Do I feel connected? Am I feeling resentful? Am I feeling pissed? Am I feeling, this can be after spending time with them in person or on the phone or over text. Okay. Then we want to look at ways I over-function or solve their problems. Okay. All of us have sort of been raised in this like soup of codependency. <laughs> So we will probably all be over-functioning in some way in these relationships. There is no shame here. The beauty, shame hides seats, hides solutions. Like if we're feeling shame and we're like, I shouldn't be doing this, we can't figure it, like we can't get out. So instead, it's like really getting direct and honest with ourselves. It's like, how am I over-functioning? How am I, you know, like my son Tyler, like just recently he called and said he was like feeling stressed financially because he has a new bill on his car. And my go-to in my head was like, oh, okay, like how, like how do I either get him to ask for a raise at work or send him money? I didn't because I've been on this rodeo for a while, but like that's my inclination. And then the fourth column there is like, what can I try next time this comes up? Next time my friend texts and says, hey, can you talk? How can I say no? Or what next time my husband is like, oh my God, I missed my dentist appointment again. You know, how can I let him have the consequences to his mismanaged life without me stepping in? Like, how can I decrease some of this clutter in my life? 
Okay, and then let me just put up here my email because um, oh, I don't have my email there. Isn't that lovely? Well, I so I do have a quiz for you all. If you want to see how codependent am I, that is this. I just did it. My website is smbwell.com. And I did slash siren for our own special, like if anyone, it's like a 10 question, how codependent am I? So you can see sort of how much clutter you have in your life. You know, it's like, how messy are my drawers? If that's interesting to you, <laughs> go there. Um, if, and this is my Love Your Life show podcast. I put out an episode every week where I share tools that will help you declutter and um, do all that. And in the, in the chat box, I will put my email so you can like if you want that worksheet today before we get the upload up just email me at suzy at smbwell.com and then those other links in case it's easier for you here i will put the siren the how code okay i'm just gonna keep typing but if someone wants to come on with a question or wants individual coaching let me know <laughs> Thank you, Susie. That's been amazing. I'm I'm a chronic people pleaser. Yeah, <laughs> have been my entire life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and being able to recognise that that is an issue has been a great takeaway for me. Yeah, yeah. It's like we think, and and I guess what I mean by it doesn't work is like it doesn't work long term. Like it doesn't. We end up feeling disconnected. Like what I hear from people pleasers, because I used to be one for four decades, and <laughs> um, is that we feel disconnected. We're like nobody knows the real me. You know, like that feeling. But it's like, like I had to get honest with myself and be like, no, because you're lying consistently. <laughs> no, like, oh, it's fine. It's all good. You know, oh, don't worry. I'll do that. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I'm seething over here and resentment or just this like it feels sort of lonely you know maybe I'm not seething but it just feels flat like I'm like oh like I want we're like craving more connection or something so yeah just mm -hmm. looking at the people pleasing and just how it it's it's not helpful to us it's not fair what I might do is stop the recording so then if anybody wants to ask some questions that they don't want to appear in the recording they can do that um, but this has been wonderful. I will upload this into the newsletter for th this Thursday. And if you could send me all those addresses, mm -hmm. I will also pop those in the newsletter so people can, can contact you directly, Susie. Okay. Do you want me to send Thank you the you. worksheet? You could like attach. I don't oh, know yes, please. Yeah. yes, please. I'll stop the recording add. and...